Hey everybody, it's Allie Edwards and I am back today to take you on a little adventure with me while I was making some of these mixed media collage ornaments. Last week I shared a video with kind of the overview of the project, the overview of what I've been working on, and then today I want to show you how some of these have come together. So we're going to dive right in. This one right here, the first one was used with a stencil, an ornament stencil to make the actual stencil shape. That That's one that I mixed with a little bit of texture paste to um, put it onto a book paper or you know a page from an old book and then I'm using after that dried let that dry for a little bit I'm using the white paint with the silk screen to add the floral pattern on top and basically what you're going to see here is just me working through a variety of these so here's another one that's already dried with the green paint on the book paper <clears throat> and then I'm going to use a different green paint a brighter green paint with the wreath stencil to add the second layer on top in the intro video or in the other video where I'm introducing the project I talked and that in the blog post too, I talked a little bit about layers right that's a lot of what these are they are layer they start with often a layer of paint and then I'm potentially adding another layer of paint on top or I'm gluing something down uh, with those deli sheets and then I'm often cutting them out so one of the questions that I got last week was am I hand cutting all of these um, I am hand cutting a big chunk of them and I'm just using my scissors just like this. I like to leave a little border around the outside. I am not trying to make these perfect whatsoever. So when I use the stencil and it's imperfect, I'm just running with it knowing that it's going to be cut out, knowing that I'm going to be adding other layers on top and just basically not having any time to deal with trying to make things perfect. That's just not how, that's not what this is about. So you can see that, I, again, I'm hand cutting them, but I also did um, create a silhouette file for myself for, for some of these so that I could cut some out, some of the pattern papers and or out of cardstock just to make it a little bit simpler. So I've been going back and forth and doing um, a little bit of both, you know, depending on the the paper background I'm using and depending on if I'm having a painted background or if I'm wanting a pattern background. I did a couple other ones here on some book paper and so now I'm taking a stamp and some stays on and I'm stamping directly on top. This one is getting a fun light green paint pen, a Posca paint pen dotted on top. Most of the time when I'm working on these you can see like in this for this particular process I had painted you know used the stencil to paint the background shapes of the ornaments first. I did that probably on a different day and then I'm coming back in on another day to add the next layers and most of these here are going to get something else added on top of them too. This is just kind of the next uh, piece of the process, the next layer there. Um, love the Posca paint pens. That's something that you'll see me use quite a bit. Uh, I just think that they are a super fun way to bring in some color. All right, so here is a deli sheet that I had previously painted on. You can see I have a couple different shapes on there. So just, um, I love, love, love doing that. Like I just think it's so fun. So this is using the green paint that we had in the collection this year on a deli sheet that I'm then going to cut out. And what I'm gonna to use to adhere that down is some gel medium. You can use matte medium, you can use a glossy, it doesn't matter. You could use um, some sort of, let's see, what's the other, I'm, I'm trying to, I can't now, I in, in the moment, I can't think of the other name for it. Any sort of liquid um, adhesive, but gel medium is the, is a gel or matte medium is just a simple thing to be able to adhere this down. So I opened up the matte medium. I've got a paintbrush. I'm going to paint a little bit of it onto the background. This is one of the ones that I cut with the silhouette. So you can see they're a little bit of in the, in terms of sizing, it's just a little bit smaller. I think one of them was a little bit smaller than the other one, but I put down that uh, adhesive and then I just layered the deli page, the painted deli sheet uh, there right on top of it. And then I'm going to add another piece um, to the top of that, bringing in some of the red paint. So remembering that you can cut these shapes up, right? That's part of the fun, I think, of painting on the deli sheets is just making a bunch of different shapes that then you can cut up, you can cut around them, you can decide, you know, which parts you want to include and which parts you don't want to include. Uh, really a fun opportunity to play. I think for me, one of the things that's been really fun about doing this this time is using the Christmas colors, right? I've got all these different Christmas colors, the reds and the greens. Um, I like black and gold and white too. So playing with uh, 
those five different colors specifically. You might like other colors, you might wanna bring in other things, and that's totally fine as well. My goal in sharing this video with you guys today is to just give you an idea of all the different kinds of things that you can add on to these, whether you're doing an ornament shape, or maybe you're doing hearts, or you're doing tags, or you're doing you know some kind of a repeated shape if you like this concept. Um, this is 100% something you could do. So here's a dictionary page that I painted just red strips on top of, and I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down um, with a little bit of the leftover green piece. So when you're doing stuff like this, it's so fun to just have all the leftover little pieces laying around. So I keep all of those uh, while I'm working through the process of getting everything adhered down onto my bases because I never know when I might want just you know a little bit of green or a little bit bit of the red uh, leftover painted paper. So lots of different options there. Uh, when I first shared the blog post in the original video for this, there were lots of great ideas from people, people talking about using these as gift tags. You could put the two in the front on the back. You could put uh, their names on the front. There's, there's just so many different ways that you could play around and uh, use these if this seems like a fun thing for you to do. For the holidays, many of you guys that are watching this know that I embark on an annual project called December Daily where I am telling one story per day. It is a memory keeping project where I'm combining words and photos and fun, playful storytelling techniques uh, to tell the story of our holiday season. And I do that for the first 25 days in December, and I've been doing that since 2007, so lots of holiday seasons documented. This year, I just have been really inspired by collage, by mixed media, and wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to do something for me that was that felt like it was just for fun, right? That it was something that was playful. Uh, I'm not thinking about storytelling. I'm not thinking about photography. I'm just thinking about shape and color and texture and using up some of the things I have here, painting new pages. It's just a really fun, this has been a really, really fun project for me personally that uses a different part of my brain. And I think I really embrace, uh, or I have been embracing that opportunity. So I've you're going to see, I don't know, I'm probably making 20 or so on here today, and then I've made a few more along the way. And after this, I'll probably share uh, on Instagram kind of as I'm working through them. So here's one of the ones that I did that stamping, the dot stamping on top using that wooden block stamp. And now I'm going to use some texture paste on top of a tree stencil. I think this is maybe a scrapbook.com tree stencil. I'll try to get the, the exact one for you. We have a larger tree stencil that is a part of our stencil set this year that would also work uh, on here. The cool thing about texture paste is it's just really thick and so you get a nice textured pattern on top. You can mix it with other colors or you can just do it in white, which is what I'm doing here. You'll see that one, uh, we'll come back to that one again later on. Here's just a random piece of cardstock that I had actually used for um, some stamping, test stamping. And I went ahead and just uh, used the silhouette to cut out some of the ornament shapes with that one. And so now I'm using some blue tape. This is from scrapbook.com. That's a repositionable adhesive. And it's great for masking. So in this case, I'm making um, really straight lines by taping on top of the ornament. And you're going to see that when I pull it off, that I'm able to have some nice, uh, nice stripe lines on top of there. It's just another way that you can play with the paints. Um, again, my goal is not perfection or to make anything perfect. It's just to kind of have fun making different layers. And I think when you find that you have a little bit of time to do a bunch at once, which is what I'm doing here, like in this case, I'm just doing a bunch of different paints um, or a bunch of different painting, right? It That's when the freedom really comes. Like that's when, that's when it I think that that's what helps us not take it as seriously because I'm more like, okay, I just want to do a bunch of these. I want to get a bunch of them done. I'm going to do a bunch of different things and we'll see how it goes. And most of these, when I am painting on top of them, or even when I'm collaging those other painted papers, I don't know what the end result is going to be. I'm not thinking, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm doing this layer first and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. Right now, I'm simply 
putting down some bases, right? It's putting down some foundations. So for this one, I've got another one of the ones that I cut with the silhouette. I'm just using some of the black paint and I'm gonna paint all over the bottom. This one ends up getting embossed on top of with the number 25 and it looks really cool in the end. But at this point, again, I didn't know. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. I'm simply painting. I've got, I've got my shapes and I'm putting some color on top of them. I'm putting some texture. I'm putting some, uh, you know, even just a little bit of paint if you want to do a ways, you know, significantly more kind of collagey sort of thing, right? Just playing around. I also love taking ones, taking pieces of paper that were just tests. So I had some craft cardstock that I had tested out some of the uh, texture paste mixed with the red paint using the little star stencil there. Um, I went ahead, I just had tested that and it already had some white paint on it. So it already looks mixed media-ish, I guess, or, you know, looks to some people maybe looks messy, but to me just falls right in line with the kinds of things that I am wanting to do. So one of the things that I, again, that I love about this is that it can just be little bits, right? Little bits of pieces of paper and little bits of things that maybe you already have in your stash. It could be fabric, it could be felt, it can be paper, it can be ribbons, it can be transparencies. There's so many things that you can add on to here, uh, which is a huge piece of what made this really or has been making this fun for me. So there's another one. That one again with the stencil and the texture paste. You can see that it, originally I did punch the holes pretty small. I am going back in and re-punching all of the holes because I decided I wanted to use bigger eyelets uh, on these. I'm using gold eyelets for most of them and they're bigger. So it's a certain point in the process I go back in and I don't even know that I have that part taped or recorded. But here you can see that I waited a little bit until the texture paste was dry on this particular ornament here. Um, this again is one that's on book paper plus the green paint um, with using the stencil. So the green paint mixed with a little bit of texture paste uh, to create, to make it thick enough or a little bit thicker. Oh, it's so cute. They turn out, they're so fun. It's just such a fun thing to do. One thing that I did end up doing also just a note on those book pages is they, some of them are really thin. So I have gone back in and I have adhered them onto like a piece of cardstock, same shape. I just cut out the shape uh, and adhered them onto a piece of cardstock. So they had a little bit more stability. Now I'm going back to one that has a cardstock base with the red paint mixed with texture paste on top of it. And then I painted some little white circles on there. And then I decided that what I wanted to add onto the circles was some embroidery floss. So I did, I did one punch through on the middle and then I did a series of punches kind of in a clock, like thinking about going around the clock. I punch noon and then three and then six and then nine. And then I come back in and fill in those other holes. And then I'm using embroidery floss and a needle to create the star shapes there. I am not tying these in the back. I'm using scotch tape just to hold down the um, embroidery floss there. So that's something that you can consider doing. I just didn't want to have any of the little knots or anything. And uh, it's just, it's just been what I've done and I'm going to keep doing it until it doesn't work for me for one reason or another. So on this one, I end up going on, I think I do this four times on top of this particular ornament. I love bringing in the hand stitching from the embroidery floss, and I also love adding stitching from the sewing machine, and you'll see some of that on here as well. So it's kind of just like looking around in your craft space or looking at what you have. There's one that I did the sewing machine on. Um, what do you want to add on top? What do you what do you want to play with? Okay, so that that one right there, I added a um, a word phrase sticker, the one that has the cross on it or the the plus sign. I added a word phrase sticker from my stash and then um, stitched it on top. Those ones right there are ones that I did emboss or I embossed on top of. I embossed Mary everything using gold. Coming back in on this one with some red dots, the same dot stamp. That's one I've had literally probably since I first started scrapbooking back in like 2002. Um, 
did the red dots on the top. Still not totally sure what I was going to do, but that's another one where you can just, you can put it on everything, right? You could just be adding it on top of a bunch of different things. So next I cut up some of the uh, tissue paper again, or the deli sheets there that had the green paint that I had gone on. And I just cut a strip of that and used uh, the gel medium or the matte medium again to adhere that down along the top. Love the layers, right? I love with the, uh, with the deli sheets there, how you can see through to the dots on the other side. Um, use that same idea on a secondary one. I'm going to take those number stamps over there. That is gold embossed. So using embossing powder on top. Then I also cut up some of the, uh, that's pattern paper from last year's December daily that I ran through the silhouette to get the shapes again. And then the white with the red text, that is actually something that I made when I first got the silk screen. So that's the silk screen pattern using the red paint on a piece of white cardstock. I'm going to adhere it using the matte medium on half of the uh, ornament there. So I've got it put going right down on the top uh, and then I'm going to cut it out along the outside edge. So lots of cutting just to make the shapes, um, bringing out a Posca paint pen again to do some dots. So while I'm working on this, it's often, you know, I have one thing drying and so I pull out another one and kind of figure out, oh, what else do I want to add on here? Um, what feels fun? What, what do I want to play around with? What do I want to try? I always love polka dots. I always love circles. Um, and then I go, so after I let that uh, let the adhesive dry there a little bit on the, the matte medium where I glued down that one paper. I'm losing my mind here. Uh, after I let it dry a little bit, then I am going in and cutting it out. So cutting around the outside edge. One of the biggest places where I'm not trying to be perfect to is around the top of the circle and around the top of the ornament. I'm very, very much just getting it close enough to to the right size. It really does not matter. And when you look at these all together, I'm way more looking at the patterns and the different things I'm putting on top. Next, I decided to go down and I'm, I'm going to punch holes in a straight line down one side and then down the other side. And I'm going to use some light green embroidery floss to stitch across this one to add some little hand, a little bit of hand stitching on top of here. I think that's another really fun thing to do. So you can do a bunch of these, you know, get, get the papers glued on, get your base foundations set up and then you can come back in with the embroidery floss to add that on there. This is a paper piercer that I'm using from Tim Holtz. It's helping me to create the initial holes. Um, I was wishing that I had a mouse pad. I don't have a mouse pad anymore. I need that to be able to push through a little bit more. It doesn't work as well on the table, but I want to, in this case with the stitching, I like having the holes already there. So I know exactly where I'm going, you know, where I'm coming up, where I'm going back down again. And so that's really helpful no matter what kind of shape. Uh, I have the idea that I probably want to do some, maybe try uh, embroidering some words onto a couple of these. I haven't done that yet, but that's in my kind of bucket of things that I would like to try with these. I also definitely want to do some jelly plate uh, printing, some play around with some jelly plate stuff. I haven't done that yet with these. I really, my main, my main goal is to just get them started and then keep going my, with my overall goal being to um, get to at least a hundred. I want to make at least a hundred of these and then be able to hang them all together. But this is something that you could totally do, you know, while you're watching TV or with your friends. Um, I'm planning on getting together with a couple friends here locally. And um, this is the project that I will be working on with them. They have some other holiday crafts that they are working on too. I thought that was a fun way to bring those two pieces of paper together. So looking forward to taking, packing up all my stuff and taking it over there uh, to play. Here's another idea. You might have some of these Tim Holtz rub-ons in your stash. I've had these for years. I've used them numerous times, you know, little one little word here or one, you know, phrase there. But while I was working on these, I was like, what if I use a whole bunch of them? What if I use a bunch at once and uh, get them all on there? So that's what that, how that one turned out uh, right there. There's one using some of the black rub-ons. I think the sets that I have had both black and white in them. And then I do a lot of stuff like this, right? Like what am I going to put on top after I get some of those initial layers? layers down. What do I want to add um, on top of there? So sometimes I'm adding an embellishment. This happens to be a uh, 
painted, this was painted on a piece of craft cardstock, so just using the white paint, uh, made some lines on there, and you can see that I actually ran that through the sewing machine, and so that's where that particular one is at. I also looked in my stash of stuff, and I had some red uh, transparency left over. I think this was from the 3x8 transparency set last year, so if you're getting the 3x8 transparency set this year, this would that would be a fun way to incorporate some of those into this kind of project if you want to do this. My What I wanted to do with this one is I'm going to make a shaker page or, or a shaker ornament. So I'm going to take the, I cut out the transparency to the size that I wanted it or to the shape of the ornament. I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine. I'm going to run it through the sewing machine and then I'm going to add some of the sequin mixes that I have from the Diary of Belle Rose and at, put that on the inside of there. So those are going to go in there. So then you can see added a few different shakers or a few different sequins on the inside and then stitched it all up and closed together. I really love, I want to do some more of those too. I love how those ones turned out. Some of you guys might've seen, I had a video recently for an advent calendar that I'm also working on that it's an all shaker advent calendar. This is from a sticker book, a Tim Holtz sticker book. Again, I'm not sure if this one's available any longer. These are ones that I've had in my stash of stuff for years where I pull off one thing and use it in my album. Um, so I'm, I'm having fun adding in some of those. These are also, so the holiday magic on that one, that's from Tim as well some of his washi tape there uh, this one you can see what I did on that pattern paper one right there is I actually painted red paint on one half of it that's a different red paint than the red paint that we have in the collection I think it was a it's a golden uh, like a just a darker red so the red that we have in the paints this year is a a lighter more of a tomato red so I kind of have a combination of both of those in there and I'm just kind of playing around right I'm picking things up and I'm kind of thinking ah, do you know what do I want to do on this one and when I when I don't know for sure I just put it back down and I pick up another one and I start somewhere else so I got out some washi tape I store all my Christmas washi tape together so it's really easy to be able to find that as well as my Christmas embellishments I actually keep all of that stored separately from my other memory keeping embellishments um, um, that is the ho, ho some ho 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 uh, washi tape and then I just ran that through the sewing machine as well I am also looking in my embellishments to see what I have I've got lots of things from many years of December daily projects and one of the things I had was a green felt heart there and so I am taking the green felt heart and adding that on to the painted stamped and texture paste stenciled background I'm adding one of Tim's little uh, word phrases on there as well and then I'm going to go ahead and just hand stitch a little bit on the bottom I think I end up doing like a an x on the top and an x on the bottom there to hold that in place so this is this is where you get to the point where you have created your backgrounds so you've got lots of different things happening on there and then you're looking in your stash to see what things can you add on top what things can you pull out to finish these finish these off uh, in a way that feels good to you and it's just fun to have a variety I think that's part of what I really love about working on this project. I know many of you out there have a collection, a nice collection of Christmas things, and I do too, which is part of what I think has been really fun, you know, in, in doing something like this, where sometimes with December Daily, I'm, I stay limited to, you know, the things that we have in the collection, and then I always have stuff left over. And so for me, most years, I am not bringing in some of the leftover pieces. Sometimes I am, but most of the time I'm not. And so this is a, this is a project that is allowing me to dive into that stash of stuff and bring out some of those other things that, you know, that I have used or I've used one or two of in the past. So adding that on top, so cute. Love how that turned out. All right, so this is the one that I used. I, this is also with the green paint mixed with the texture paste. This is a stencil. I actually mislabeled this stencil previously. It has, it's from uh, Dilution, so Diane Reevely Ranger. Uh, and I did link it to the right one, but it's it's a star rather than a poinsettia. And I think for me, it looks like a poinsettia. But though, so I, part of what I'm looking for when I am either, you know, making the stencil shapes or looking in my stash 
items for things that can go on top, right? And a lot of times for me, I like adding things just to the center. And so different things, you know, like a circle or this shape in particular right there. So I'm using a gold brad to add it right on top. You can see that the background of that one had the red paint, half it's half red paint, and then the other half, the top half, is rub-ons. So using a you know a, a bigger selection uh, from the rub-on package rather than just one or two. Here's a little bit of my washi tape, my Christmas washi tape, my Christmas stuff. I had some canvas words. I have some little Santas. So I'm pulling some of those things out that I've had for a while in you know in, in my storage looking at the chipboard looking at different things that i might want to add on top um, so i had pulled out the chipboard i have the santa <clears throat> excuse me um, and what i end up doing with that one right there is i do end up adhering that guy on there and then i run it through the sewing machine you don't have to run it through the sewing machine i just like the extra little bit of stitching but great use for some of the chipboard that you might have in your stash too uh, here's another deli sheet where i'm adding on a few more patterns using the posca paint pens the these are pieces that I then am able to cut out and use as patterns. Such a fun and simple way to create your own. And you can see I'm doing really basic shapes, right? Circles, wavy lines, cross hatches, um, X's. What else do I have on there? Plus signs. Uh, I just like those are the those are the uh, shapes that I personally come back to again and again. But you could also do trees and stars and more Christmas related thing. I also have been doing a bunch of words, so re rewriting words and then using those as patterns. Um, it's just a fun it's a fun thing. And and again, I think part of what I like about this process is it's broken down into different steps, right? I can't do all of this at once, so I'm doing different things at different points in time, and that's. That's what I'm bringing them all together for you in this particular video. Another idea I had is to see what other kind of textured papers I have. I had some cork paper in my stash. I had some glitter paper in my stash. So I'm also hand cutting those, just picking up one of the other ones, using that as a base. Um, you can have a transparent base. Actually, I need to do that because I haven't done that one yet. I start, this is the kind of stuff that I start thinking about in the middle of the night. Like, oh, I need to go and paint. I want to just paint some lines onto one of these. And I want to um, do a crisscross or I want to do a, I want to paint a grid on one of them. I just keep thinking of all of these different things. So in your selection of crafty stuff, you might have some fun cardstock that you want to play with. You might have some textured papers, things that you maybe have used in the past. Um, some of these things are things that I've used before in our product play workshop for December daily, especially so these, I know I've used the cork paper and I know I've used that glitter paper before. And then I've got the star transparency there that I can cut the stars out of. So th just thinking, you know, looking, looking around in your stuff, seeing what you have and, or, you know, maybe picking up a couple other things that might be fun that can be used for, you know, this particular project or any other holiday sort of crafting. All right, and then picking up that transparency there, that was something that I considered using on another project in the past, and I kept it, which I'm glad I did because these stars are perfect for adding on to something like this. So I'm cutting them out of the transparency, and then it's gonna give me another shape that I can layer on my backgrounds. I can't remember where this one's gonna go, but my desk is a mess, as you can imagine. I have tons of pieces of, you know, little bits of things everywhere. So at a certain point, I will... <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, try to reorganize. But for this kind of project, like I like just having a bunch of random things out there because then I can just grab them and be like, oh, now it's now it's time for you. Now, Santa, you get to have a home. And now, oh, Painted Circle, now you get to have a home. So those are kind of some of the things that I'm laughing to myself and thinking about as I go along. But continuing to cut out shapes again, here you can just see cutting out of that um, red glitter paper. I'm pretty sure I got that at Michael's at some point in the past. Then next up, I'm going back and I'm going to add in some more of the embroidery floss onto this particular ornament. So you guys saw me do one of those before. Again, I'm doing it kind of in a clock, punching those holes first, and then I stitch um, coming up from the back and then down through the middle is what seemed to work the best uh, for me on this particular one. So it, coming up from the back, using the scotch tape to adhere the embroidery floss on the back and then going down through the middle and then coming back up uh, from the back again. I really like stitching like this. It's really, it's a fun, it's a fun way to get additional texture 
onto your projects and you know whether you're doing it on top of photos or you're doing it with journaling i just like the texture and often the pops of color that come from the embroidery floss as well so keep this in your arsenal i just have a, a big needle i don't know what the size of the needle is but it's one that makes it so that it's not so impossible to thread with the floss through the needle and I'm getting older and my eyesight continues to <laughs> deteriorate and uh, it's getting harder to see that kind of stuff for me. So I probably need to go to the eye doctor again. Um, but yeah, that punching those holes in advance makes it easier and using uh, a bigger needle there too. All right, next up, I'm coming back to this guy. This is one where I painted half of him. He, he, his, his original background is the pattern paper, some pattern paper from last year's December Daily. And then I put the blue tape on top so I could have that really nice line right down the middle. And then I took it over to the sewing machine. I layered the transparent star with one of those canvas uh, word phrase strips that we have offered in the past. And that just got stitched on top. Now you can see I'm mixing up some of the texture paste. So I'm going to do some more backgrounds. So this is kind of how I work. So I just, I'm like, oh, now I'm, now I'm ready to do some backgrounds. So this is using, I think it's 140 pound watercolor paper, which is a really nice, sturdy, um, weight of of paper for this kind of thing that you're where you want it to have a little want it to be a little bit sturdy i think the ones that i did on the book pages those really really thin book pages most of those need to be backed with something else and i kind of learned that as i went along through the process uh, i'm using a paint a palette knife here to just to put the texture paste mixed with the red paint uh, on top to create some more of the ornament shapes for myself so again Lots of different ways that you can make these happen just by you know doing one and then cutting them out. You could even just paint the whole piece of paper if you wanted to and then cut them out. But what I really like is using the stencil because the stencil gives me, there's my perfect ornament shape, perfect is in quotations, my perfect ornament shape, and then I can just keep going and make a few more. And I talked about this in the other video too, is that when I, I'm mixing paint in these little paint pots, these little pots, so that I'm not wasting the paint so that I can also, I can put the lid on it, it will stay. Um, but I also am trying to not mix too much so that I can just use what I have and I'll, and I'll make a bunch of these until I've run out of the paint that's actually in the pot there. So um, that tape is great to use as a repositionable adhesive. I, I also wanted to see what happened if I just grabbed some paper and use the edge of the paper. Kind of the same sort of thing that we talked about with the silk screens, but doing that um, with the stencil. Again, the texture paste is making this thicker. Um, that is a, a piece of what I definitely, I, I like about it, what I like about the look of it. So you can see they start getting a little messier and whether that's me or the stencil or you know that the paint's getting underneath or whatever this is where i want you to see that this is a, this is the part that i don't care about right especially because i'm cutting all of these out and they are then getting uh other things layered on top of them right they are going to have some sort of they're going to have words they're going to have paper they're going to have something glued on them they're going to have you know something silk screened on the top like there's all these different things that could happen with them so i'm not too worried about it i did want to try one with the paintbrush so that's what i'm doing here just another option just gives you a little bit of a different look with the brush stroke this these are the kinds of things that you can choose for yourself and experiment like give yourself the space to play around with that and see see what happens um, I went and washed it off because I could tell that that one was messier and then I wanted to try it again so I just walked down to my bathroom um, wash it off with just warm water cold water doesn't really matter just water uh, and then you can keep going with painting some more of them uh, i think that the size of the paper this the notebook the watercolor notebook that this page came from i think it's like an eight by ten size i could be wrong maybe it's nine by twelve i'm not sure it's around that size though and i just pull the pages out from the binding and to be able to use it as a background for any sort of like mixed media collage that I like to do. All right, so now I'm back to cutting out some more of the backgrounds. Again, this is going to be a background with the glitter cardstock. So that keep that in mind as something that you can do. And I'm just cutting, cutting out more shapes. It's a lot of just standing there and cutting out shapes. I'm listening to podcasts and I'm listening to books on tape and I'm, it's just such a, it's so fun. 
All right, next up I had cut with my Silhouette some pattern paper. This was a like gold striped pattern paper that I think I got from scrapbook.com and I'll see if they still have that. I think it's a couple years old, one that I've had in my stash. Here you can see how I'm taking some of those red circles on the deli sheet. I am going to use the matte medium again to adhere that directly on to my ornament shape. I just put a little piece of paper down on my um, desk here. A couple of people have commented about how how much paint is already on my table. Actually, a lot of that paint is from when the girls used to paint in my office. I do, my scrapbook work is on the other side of this table. I have these two uh, kitchen islands that are back to back in my office. And the girls, they just ended up getting paint all over everywhere. And rather than being mad or frustrated about it, I decided that I was just going to embrace it. And that is going, that was going to be what it was. And that also <laughs> has freed me up in a lot of, uh, other ways, in <laughs> uh, other ways related to my own creativity too, of like, it doesn't matter if there's paint on the background and, and whatever and stuff gets on the table and things get stamped on there. I, in, for so many ways for me, it just feels like evidence, right? It's evidence of creativity and evidence of play and evidence of, layers and fun and all that stuff. This is actually a sticker set that's in the advent calendar this year. So I pulled that out and it's a great word phrase um, strip sticker sheet there that fits perfectly on top of these guys. So that was a fun thing to add on. And then I'm taking, I had cut the cut along the middle of the circles there and now I have this top strip. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting along the edges of the um, circles or the half circles there and I'm going to add that right on top as well. So getting pulling out the matte medium again and, and adding that for my adhesive uh, right on top. So cute. I actually really love how that one turned out. That might be one of my favorites. It's hard to pick favorites, right? When you do something like this, because there's so, there's so many and they are all, they all just feel so fun. And if you don't like one of them, you can put something else on top, right? That is also another piece of, I think what makes this a really fun, um, creative process. All right, so after cutting a few more of those guys out, I moved on to another one, which is using one of the wood veneer stars from the collection, December Daily Collection this year. You might have something else similar to that in your stash. I had, I'm gonna use the embroidery floss to attach this on top. So I'm using my paper piercer again to just get the holes established in the first place. And you can see that I do them a little bit first and then I go back in and actually make the full holes. And then what I'm gonna do is just loop the embroidery floss over each of the, um, I don't even know what to call that, the places where the stars intersect each other or the lines of the stars intersect each other. And you'll see that um, in a minute here. So this is another way that you can use embroidery floss is to you know attach embellishments on top of your project and not have to use any kind of adhesive if you don't want. Um, so you can do that with chipboard, you can do that with rubber pieces, you could do that with um, you know, a wide variety of embellishments. And this is where I really like the pops of color, right? The pops of red that can come from that uh, from the embroidery floss. And I just, I'm sticking with red and I have a dark green and a, uh, a light green. I also right now just have red thread on my sewing machine. And so I'm using mainly red thread. Earlier this year, I did buy a bunch of other threads that I could use, some other colors. So I need to, at some point here, I'm gonna switch it up and you'll start seeing uh, maybe some green stitching on things. But I think, I don't know, for some reason, I'm just really into the red and that's what I keep coming back to uh right now 
All right, so next up, this is a sheet of watercolor paper that we offered with our One Little Word collection this year. Also can make a great base uh, for your ornaments. It is not as heavy as that 140 pound. I'm actually not sure what weight it is, but it's another you know textured style of paper that can be fun to add paint onto or um, use the gel medium to collage um, different shapes onto or things like that as well. Next up, I also just ran a piece of white cardstock. Actually, that might be the watercolor paper. Maybe, I, yeah, this is, it is the watercolor paper. So I actually ran that through the silhouette with the uh, silhouette file for these particular ornaments and um, just cut them out that way. So that definitely works. And you could obviously do that with the cork, with the glitter paper, you know, anything that you can cut with your silhouette, you could make those shapes as the background, but you could also do corrugated paper. You could do cardboard, right? Cardboard could be the base. All right, so here's a book paper. This is from a large uh, dictionary that I got where I painted joy on the top just with the green paint, painting that over and over again. And this is where you can see, this is kind of when I was thinking about that the dictionary paper that I have is too thin to be its own, to live on its own for the way that I wanna use these. And so I'm gonna actually end up just adhering this, this same one that I'm cutting out right here onto this background paper. So it's gonna become a base for that. I could have glued it first and then cut it off. It doesn't really matter, but that would have also been an option to glue first and then cut around the outside edges. Um, it's whatever you wanna do, right? There's not a, a, a right or a wrong for this. Um, but I love how that one looks as a background too. That's a fun way to just, you know, messily messily that's a word messily paint it on top and then i'm going to use the matte medium there to gel medium whatever matte medium um to adhere that on top and now i have another base lots and lots of bases it's so fun these are so fun you guys having the best time all right, and then just a couple more things here for today's video. I'm gonna cut out, again, some, here's some more circles that I did at a certain point with the uh, paint there, and I'm gonna trim that down so that I can add that directly on top of my Joy background paper. So I'm just messily, messily cutting this out. This is not perfect. Do not, do not make, you don't need to worry about this being perfect. So I'm just kind of going around the outside of the shape so that with the deli paper, it makes it look like you have a little bit of an outline on there, right? And that can look really cool. Or you can cut it up right against the edge if you want to do that as well. Um, those are options that are available to you. I just wanted to make a, a strip that can go across the middle there on top of my joy pattern, kind of thinking a little bit about where I might want that to go. Oh man, just so fun. It's such a, it's so fun looking at that. All right. So I'm going to be wrapping this video up here. I wanted to give you a, a more more in-depth look at how I was starting to build some of these. I will probably be back on here with another video to show a few more, um, potentially next week, we'll see. And then I'm at a certain point, I'm hoping to be sharing more of these on Instagram, just kind of in real time as I am making them. Happy to answer any questions you might have in the comments below.